Hey brothers and sisters and everyone else out there, welcome to this video. I wanted to bring this short video today to you about the Super Bowl that's coming up on Sunday. And if you are a believer that has walked with God uh, for any length of time and have developed a, a maturity, then you understand very clearly that the Super Bowl is not something any Christian should ever participate in. And I know that might offend a lot of people. Well, you need to be offended because you need to to, to steer clear of that. You don't want to be caught in that transgression. Now, you say, why is the Super Bowl a transgression? What's so wrong? Because, you know, unfortunately, you know, many of the so-called churches around where I live and even where I lived previously, uh, they would actually have Super Bowl parties. And they would have, even some of them had the Super Bowl played at their church. They brought that abomination into their church. Or most would go to someone's house, they have a Super Bowl party in their so-called, you know, life groups. And they call it fellowship because they're sitting around there, hooping and hollering, yelling at the TV, watching the drunken festivities with the half-naked women dancing around and then watch the satanic ritual at halftime. And they somehow think that it's called fellowship between themselves in the name of God. You know, the, the sad thing is, is it, it strikes a, a, a very strong correlation uh, in the days of Moses when they danced around the golden calf. You know, Aaron didn't say, you know... Um, this is all in the name of this false god, um, which that golden calf actually is a representation, they think, of a god named um, Pythor. Uh, in Egypt, they had a uh, calf resemblance, a bull resemblance. And it was actually kind of noted for a thing called prosperity. So they're all dancing around this calf, half naked, uh, rising up uh, to play after they ate. And they were dancing around all in the name of this false god, called Pythor, Prosperity, a golden calf. And then uh, Aaron says, tomorrow we're gonna sacrifice to the Lord because he said basically like, we're going to try to sanctify this and make this something that uh, we can have, that this is, this is our new, improved God. It was wickedness and uh, only Moses intervened that they were not destroyed. And here's the thing is that golden calf today is still very well and present because anywhere where you're going to see a lot of people dancing around half naked and stuff, you know there's a gold calf around the, there somewhere. So when you talk about all the football games and the half naked cheerleaders, basketball, you name it, uh, there's a golden calf idol that is represented even far back into those days. Now the Canaanite god Baal is uh, a false god that is still reverberated through civilizations even today, not only with the idolatry in sports and entertainment, um, but also, too, in the ancient Roman times and also in the Greek times of uh, their god Zeus, you know, the, the king of the gods, their false gods. So this ancient god is, is still um, a demonic god that is uh, attempting to try to challenge the almighty god. And so when I think of Baal, when I think of Super Bowl, I think of Super Baal because that's what it is. It's, it's bringing people to the attention and worship of that false god. Now you say, how is the Super Bowl related to Baal? Well, let me read a scripture to you and I'm gonna bring a little bit more to you. If you still haven't figured this out, that it's wicked, well, you should understand by this video that this is not something you need to have a part of at all. First Kings chapter 19, verse 18. Yet, have, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him. That was told to Elijah. He fled from Jezebel after she threatened his life after the prophets of Baal were slain. And Elijah told God, I am the only one left. I'm the only prophet. And yet um, he was feeling like he was the only one left of the true followers of the almighty God. And God had that answer to him that he had 7,000 who had not bowed the knee to Baal nor kissed him. There's still a remnant. And the question I'm gonna ask you today is are you going to bow to Baal? Are you going to kiss Baal? This Sunday, are you going to give your time and attention, go to your Super Bowl party, call it Christianity, call it fellowship with, with believers as you indulge in the feast of unrighteousness and wickedness, as you watch the satanic rituals, as you watch the wicked commercials, as you listen to all the wickedness and filth and the whole display of the world before you, are you going to be entertained? Are you going to be delighted in that and still say, you know what, I'm a Christian I love Jesus. And if you have a church, 
A church that has a prayer meeting. I know that's a very hard thing to find. I can't even find one around me. I've talked to pastors to even to start one. They don't want it. There are very few people that want God. I get it. You know, and but if you do have a church, well, most churches have church Sunday night anyways. You should want to be there instead. And the tragedy is that most of the churches, they're probably going to call off service to watch the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. They're probably going to have it in their church. I've been to churches before where they even had it in the church and they watched it. They brought that abomination in. And here's the thing is to my shame, when I was an early Christian, um, I actually went to some Super Bowl parties. I actually went in the idea of fellowship and I went to someone's house and we watched it. And you know what? We didn't talk about God. We didn't talk about the things of the spirit. How can you? You're just, I mean, stewing in the wickedness of the world. That spewingness is coming out of that TV, out of that filthy idol. And, and all that is just vomited out into the audience. Like how in the world can you bring Christ into that? You can't. You have to come out from among the world to be separate. Now, here's the thing is, Super Baal, uh, he is wanting you to give his affection. He is wanting you to give his attention. And you know what? Maybe you're scheduled to go to some party this Sunday. Maybe you told someone. Well, tell them you can't go. Tell them, say, you know what? This goes against the God that I love and serve, and I'm not gonna be one to kiss Baal. I'm not gonna be one to bow the knee you know what? What if Jesus comes back Sunday afternoon? You think you're going to go to heaven sitting in front of loving Super Baal? You think you're going to make it? Or are you looking for the appearing of the Son of God to come at any moment? My friend, heed the warning. It's time to be ready. It's time to come out from among the world and be separate. If you can't understand that, I don't know if you ever will. All the wicked singers that have devoted their souls to Satan, they do demonic tongues, even on the satanic halftime show. They do all the wicked uh, visuals of riding beasts into the, the Super Bowl arena. They, 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 they promote that filth and all, that, all these symbols out there right in the open. And if you think that's no big deal, then you're deceived. The devil has you wrapped up. He has you completely deceived. Don't be a Baal worshiper. Don't be a super Baal worshiper. And serve the living God. Serve Jesus Christ and love him with all your heart. Thanks for watching.